goes on to state that the only cash crop that they had for the year was 343 pounds of maple sugar. Hmm. Only, they were taken to Lewisburg. And that's the only way they had to raise dollars. That's right. The only and, of course, those dollars would have gone to probably mostly to pay taxes, wouldn't it? That's right. All right, let me ask you about Duncan's Lane. Okay. Where on earth is Duncan's Lane? Okay. Uh, go up to Anoto, turn left on uh, the road to, road to Woodrow, about a mile and a half up, make a left-hand turn back towards George Tyler's. Okay. Uh, so that's a road that used to go through to uh, Spruce Knob, right? That's correct. Okay. Now that's Duncan's Lane? That's Duncan's Lane. About halfway up, uh, just past the old Duncan farmhouse, uh, now, is that the house where uh, Tyler lives? No. Okay. Tyler lives further on up and to the left. This one's on the right-hand side of the road. All right. It's I think I know what you're talking uh, about. The farmhouse. It's right up okay. against the road. About a, a little over 100 yards further up is where the battle took place. There was a big rock at that time where the road is now. That rock now is down closer to the, the creek. Okay. And that's where the sharp was shot to the hips. Uh... The battle took place from there and went back to uh, Duncan's farmhouse. The commander of the Union forces was Samuel Young, who was one of the ministers at Hamlin Chapel. Okay. He was a captain at that time. At the end of the war, he had become a colonel. Samuel Young was a little bit of a radical. Uh, he then left uh, the Pocahontas area and went to Kansas found some suitable land that he liked, came back and took a number of them, the Griffins, the Buzzards, the Millers, the Duffields, Gays, and took them to Montgomery County, Kansas, to a town that he founded called Radical City. Radical City. Radical City. R-A-D-I-C-A-L. That is correct. All right. And, uh, in fact, uh, Robert McKendry, our one, grandfather, great-grandfather, was married there. Okay. Now, spell that McHenry. Is that Mac Henry? No, M-C-K-E-N-D-R-E-E. -E. Ken okay, good. Uh, I uh, didn't want to get confused with, uh, with that one to see the stones and so forth. Right. So they formed a, there was a, a, this, uh, this little village out in Kansas. Correct. Now, I thought you said maybe it doesn't exist anymore. It or does it's not, not exist it's anymore. It's, it's gone. just north of uh, Independence. Right. You getting pictures of that? There's nothing left. I mean, yeah. there's nothing left. I didn't even find boards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's that's interesting because there, uh, there have been various immigrations out of the county over the years. But here, uh, do you think that uh, he was doing this relocation because of the sentiment related to after yes. the Civil War? I believe so because the sentiment between Union and Southerners at that time was even worse after the war than it was during the war. So he was leaving because he was a union. Right. He was uh, union inclined, and uh, the families that with, went with him most likely were most sympathizers with the union that side. That's correct. But right. they were the victors, in fact. Right. But they didn't feel victorious, apparently. No. No. Because they were outnumbered. Yeah, country. it would have been hard to make it in this county yes. like that. Yes. I know the Griffin family, uh, their farm was over in the head of Swago Creek. Mm -hmm. And they moved to uh, the Radical City area and eventually ended up in Oklahoma. Uh, the Buzzards and Millers, there's still a bunch of them in the uh, Montgomery County area. What part of Kansas is that? Southeastern Kansas. Southeastern Kansas. Any idea why that particular spot? Yes. It had just been opened up. In fact, when they were moving in, the Osage were being moved out. Okay. So it was prime nothing there. So they would have gotten land for free or free just or a just grant a to move in? Nothing, yeah. But it was as a result of the Indians being removed? Mm -hmm. Removed, and the uh, Osage uh, was a reservation. And uh, they, the, they bought land, the Osage bought land in Oklahoma. That's that's between uh, Ponca City and uh, Bartlesville. Bartlesville, yeah. 
and uh, between where uh, headquarters was for originally for Phillips 66 and Conoco. And uh, they bought that land and they had head rights. To the land. So the Osage were it. not forcibly removed? Yes, yeah. they were. They were? Yeah. But they were allowed to buy land? Yes. They were bought, bought, bought land. They bought a whole county. Wow, that's interesting history. And then our people from Pocahontas County then went to where they had left. That's correct. Okay. Now, he knows quite a bit about more of the Osage because his daughter married an Osage. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> it is amazing. Uh, one of our, our dreams is to trace, trace the immigration of folks from Pocahontas County. You see, some of my folks uh, went to Nebraska. Okay. And uh, they're kinfolk to people out there. And you kind of wonder what happens to people. But this would have been one of the very earliest. Now, they're, uh, the Millers kept a journal that still survives oh, of really? the immigration from Pocahontas County to Radical City. Do you have some? No, I don't have access to it, but I can get access to it. Oh, boy. <laughs> now, that's the heart of a true genealogist that can do that. It's in the possession of Daniel Grimes in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh. Now, are we saying that the Grimeses were... Uh... No, this Grimes was a uh, griffin. Okay. All right. No relation to the Grimes that are in the county. Would the Grimeses in the county have been southern sympathizers, yes. basically? Okay.